What's up everyone, Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com. Let's talk about intermittent fasting. So at one point you had Dr. Rhonda Patrick, you had Peter Atia, you had Andrew Huberman, all these brainiacs were fasting. Before that, before the science community hopped on board, you had the Hodge twins, which were at the time the fasting twins. Everyone online was intermittent fasting. And I held steady, I held strong that I think it's a fad. And people were literally angry at me. It's not a fad. It's not a fad. It works. It cures this. It cures that. We were cavemen. We used to, you know, go hunting and eat once a month and this and that. And I'm like, look, dude, take away all the potential health benefits. Just take those out the door. Throw them out the window. At the end of the day, food is social. If you go to a business lunch, you're not just going to want to sit there and drink water, right? You're going to want to eat lunch. If you have a working breakfast. You're going to want to eat breakfast. Also, like, I don't know about you, but I feel good when I eat food. I like waking up. I like having breakfast. I like having breakfast foods. I like eggs. I like pancakes. I like toast. I, I don't want to forego that. And then I'm like, wait a second. Like, are we sure the health benefits are really from the intermittent fasting or is it from the caloric decrease? And then the, you know, the lean gain study came out, which showed us that the reason there was a slight difference in fat loss is the fasting study ate 250 less calories on average than the non-fasting study. So what we found out there is maybe it has something to do with caloric intake. So what I see is for some people, fasting is a way to co control calories. If you only have six hours a day to mess up and not snack, a lot of people gain weight snacking. Like, a, a, like, like nine almonds is like 50 calories. So if you're just munching on almonds, you're going to have more calories. So the average person isn't weighing out every single meal who's intuitively eating. It gives you six less hours to mess up. You know, it gives you not even six, more than that. You know, a 16-day fasting, people are eating 12 plus hours of the day, right? People are eating all day long. So at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're decreasing the opportunity for people to overeat. Now, when people are on set controlled macronutrient diet plans, there's no difference. So all the benefits we saw from blood pressure to cholesterol, all that stuff, I'll surmise that it was mainly due to caloric decrease, to losing weight. And if intermittent fasting helps you lose weight, by all means, intermittent fast. But for most people, it's just not something that's going to work long term. Does it help people lose weight? Yes. It prevents them from overeating in a large portion of the day when they would overeat. Also, there's only so much food you could pack in. And if you're trying to get enough protein in, a gram of protein per pound of body weight daily, let's say you're 150 pounds. So in six hours, you need 350 gram per of protein meals. It's hard to do. So just protein alone is going to satiate and fill you up in that time period. For me, when I intermittent fasting, because I tried it, I even wrote a book on it. What happened to me is when I get out of that non-eating zone, that fasting period, I eat triple the food. I was so hungry. My body's trying to recuperate the calories that it needs. Maybe it's because I'm extremely lean. I don't know. But at the end of the day, for me, it wasn't right. But I do like long-term fasts. One of the best I've ever felt is when I got my colonoscopy and I cleaned out for 36 hours beforehand. Boy, did I feel good. I, it actually reset a lot of the issues in my stomach. I have irritable bowel syndrome. Since my colonoscopy two weeks ago, I've had no symptoms of IBS, which for me, usually it goes away for about a week or so to be gone for two straight weeks. Fasting does have benefits. So whether it's for stomach reset, just letting your stomach kind of reset, not be digesting for a little bit, that's not a bad thing. But this whole idea that skipping breakfast and being a 16-8 faster is going to do anything for you, I think it's kind of silly. At the end of the day, a lot of Americans skip breakfast. And we're still a nation that the last weight uh, obesity statistics were 2019. That was before the great fattening of 2020, when they were delivering alcohol and food to your house and they shut down gyms. Oh, and filled your skate parks with sand. So we're probably 50% overweight obese easily in the United States. A lot of these people don't eat breakfast. They rush out the door. They'll get El Torito at lunch and eat all the chips they can eat. That's America. Skipping breakfast doesn't mean ish. Breakfast is an important meal. I have plenty of data. I've done videos on these studies 
showing that breakfast, you eat a bigger breakfast, you eat less throughout the day, eat less calories. So which one is it, guys? Is it breakfast is bad or is it breakfast is good? Again, you can't just cherry pick studies. And again, you look at, well, blood sugar, insulin, that's all well and controlled if you eat the right foods. So you don't have to fast. So you look at all these experts selling us on this for years, promoting these things, these crazy claims that were easily explained by the reduction in calories and by the fact that we're making it so these people with no structure in their diet have structure and can't snack for 16 hours of the day. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Do you intermittent fast? Am I wrong? Am I right? Have you tried intermittent fast? I also want to show you something. MTS Nutrition Machine Whey Peanut Butter Cookies and Cream is back in stock. We have seven total flavors, okay, guys? We have a six-pound bundle. It's cheaper per pound than our old five-pounder, and you can mix and match. You get peanut butter cookies and cream, chocolate, chocolate. You get vanilla. You get chocolate. You get cookies and cream. You can mix and match however you want. Amazing deal. We got machine uptake back in stock. Crea Pure Creatine back in stock. Machine Greens and Reds are back in stock. TigerFitness.com. Please go there, support us. That's that's how I do it. Like, if you do anything, I don't care if you subscribe to this video, I'd like for you to subscribe to this channel. I don't care if you like this video, comment down below. I'd love you to help me in the algorithm. Please go to tigerfitness.com, support us. Yesterday was my wife's birthday. We're gonna celebrate with 10% off the entire site, 10% off the entire site for her birthday through the end of today. Coupon code is Katie, K-A-T-I-E, coupon code KT gets you 10% off tigerfitness.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment down below. Shop at tigerfitness.com. That's not a good Everybody here knows about the benefits of probiotics and digestive enzymes for gut health, for immunity. So I wanted something that I could eat after a meal. I always like something sweet after I eat, kind of like a dessert, but we don't want the calories. So what if we could create a calorie-free, naturally sweetened wafer that's delicious, that's chocolatey, that I can eat after a meal, I can eat any time, that satisfies my sweet tooth, but also delivers the probiotics and digestive enzymes. So we have machine uptake. Machine uptake, check this out, is a delicious chocolate wafer. Mmm, that is so good. Calorie free. What I do is after meals, especially those containing lactose, maybe whey protein, something that your body might not agree with, maybe you're a little lactose intolerant, maybe a little dairy intolerant, Machine Uptake is perfect for you. Get a bottle, try it, you'll love it. It'll become your probiotic of choice and it's absolutely delicious.